All right, so here's our start of physics. Vector measurements and scalar measurements. So any measurement that you can think of is either going to be a vector measurement or a scalar measurement. So at this point, I just want you guys to know the difference, the key differences between vector and scalar. Raise your hand if you've done vectors before in math class, but probably not scalars, right? Does the word scalar sound familiar? So, okay, so what's the difference? The difference between vector measurements and scalar measurements is that vector measurements have magnitude and direction, whereas scalar measurements have magnitude only. Okay, so I want to make sure everybody understands the word magnitude. I think direction is pretty clear uh, to understand. Um, there's two main ways to to uh, give direction in physics. The two, the, the two ways that you're going to see directions being specified are with, what, what's one way to specify a direction? Like if you're going to give somebody directions, clearly you could say, you, you could use what? North, south, east, west, that's one. And by the way, these are called frames of references. North, south, east, west is referred to as a frame of reference. It's just, you know, something that everybody agrees on, like, okay, north is that way, south is that way. Um, what's, what's the second frame of reference used in physics? You use it in math class. It's the most commonly used one in math. X, Y. X, y. The X direction and the Y direction. Those would be considered uh, directions. So direction, I think, makes sense to most people. The word magnitude, for some reason, is a stumper. Like kids come across the word magnitude, which is used a lot. You know, like when you're taking a, a test or a quiz or the homework set, you know, the question could say, you know, give you all this information and then say, find the magnitude of the force. Find the magnitude of the acceleration. And it's a real simple word, um, the meaning of it. So the word magnitude means how big, how much, how fast, how far, if you're ranking something between 0 and 10, um, how awesome, you know, like, oh, that dive, huh? Volcanoes, right? Volcanoes. They get measured, like, by magnitude? Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the, or earthquakes. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the magnitude of the earthquake. It's how, bi how, how intense. So, like, you know, for example, I weigh about 200 pounds. Would that be a magnitude? Yeah, how much I weigh is a magnitude. Uh, I'm almost 40 years old. Is that a magnitude? Yeah. Pretty much, I mean, it, every measurement has a magnitude. Now, whether it's vector or scalar depends upon whether a direction is given. Okay, so let's just do, I have four examples here. So what do you think about time? Is it scalar? Or vector? Scalar. Because now why would time be scalar? Because it doesn't make any sense to put a direction on it. You know, if you're if I told you how to bake some cookies and I said, Alright, so you know, put the cookies in the oven and bake them for ten minutes south. You'd be like, What? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, time is scalar, no direction. Okay, how about temperature? It's about 75 degrees outside. Scalar. Yeah, scalar. You don't put a direction on temperature. No direction. That's scalar. Okay, let's got two more. How about force? Vector. Because um, look, this guy's pushing on this car. So what would be the magnitude of his force? The magnitude is how hard he's pushing, you know. If he's super strong, maybe he's pushing really hard. Um, if it's Mr. Ingle behind the car, it's going to be a small magnitude because he's, <laughs> he's really weak. Sorry, Mr. Ingle. Okay. Uh, so force. And then the direction, which way is that guy pushing? To the, I mean, we can't really, we can't use north, south, east, or west, or x, y, because, you know, unless it were set up, unless, unless they told us, you know, <laughs> You know, boom, this way is east, and then that way is west. Then we could say that the, the direction of the force is east, right? But we would just say to the right, but it's a direction. 
All right, and then the last one, this was kind of tough to find a photo for. This one was tough. Uh, acceleration. So we'll, we'll talk a lot about acceleration later in chapter two, but um, why was it difficult to find a photo? Because a lot of things accelerate, you know, a ball can accelerate, a car can accelerate, a person can accelerate. Yeah, a photo, like if I showed you a photo of a car, you'd be like, uh, is the car sitting there? Is it moving but not accelerating? Because you can move without accelerating, right? Uh, acceleration, which we'll talk about later, is any time your velocity changes. Any time you like go faster, 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 or slower, 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 uh, that acceleration. So here, which way is that airplane accelerating? You can see, see those thrusters there? That airplane is what? Taking off. It's accelerating to the right. So there's a magnitude, and that's got to be a big magnitude, right, on an aircraft carrier. That's got to be a big acceleration to get off the end of the boat and go, up, go into the air. Okay, so that's what? Vector is Taylor. Vector. Acceleration is vector. Now, there are some, so those were all pretty straightforward. You know, time temperature, force, acceleration, but there are two um, terms that are very commonly used that are, uh, it's not obvious which one's vector and which one's scalar. Okay, so distance and displacement, these are two terms that are very similar in meaning but one of them is vector and the other one is scalar. And it's important because, you know, physics exams will try to trick you up on this. You know, there's, there's a difference between distance and displacement. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about vectors and scalars, which one is going to be a pain in the butt? Which one is by far more of a pain in the butt than the other? Vectors. Vectors are a pain in the butt because they're going to make you think a lot harder. Um, I like to put it this way. When you're dealing with scalars, when you're dealing with scalars, 5 and 5 added together will always be 10. Always. In the world of scalar, 5 plus 5 will always be 10. In the world of vector, will 5 plus 5 always be 10? Nope. 5 plus 5 in the world of vector will be anywhere from 0 to 10. It could be anywhere in there. And uh, we'll do, we'll, we're, we're going to focus on vectors in Chapter 3. So if you're not totally getting what I just said, you'll get it in Chapter 3. But just remember, vectors are a pain in the booty. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to know, distance is a scalar. Distance is scalar. And then displacement is vector. Okay, now here's, here's one way to think about it. So I put this map up here. So we are down here. There's Palos Verdes right there. Okay, and let's say we go on a journey. Okay, so we leave Palos Verdes and we go on a journey up through Los Angeles into Kern County. Ooh, let's go up. My brother lives in San Luis Obispo. What's up, John? Okay, go see my brother and then uh, up through here, and then back down through San Bernardino into Riverside. Now, why do they call Riverside Riverside? There's no river out there. For homework, find out why they call it Riverside. I don't know, I really don't know. Has anybody ever wondered that? Have you guys heard of Riverside? Why do they call it Riverside? Seriously. But anyway, so our starting point is here and our ending point is there. Did we travel a distance on that journey? Yeah, and the distance would be like whatever your car told you, whatever the odometer said. You know, it's the total length of this whole journey that we just took. That would be your distance. Now, displacement, another name for displacement is change in position. You're going to you'll see that uh, displacement is referred to as change in position. 
and position is frequently represented just with x. So displacement, the physics way to write displacement, the physics way to show it is delta x. So how do you read how do you read that? Delta is what? Change and then x is position. It's where you are. How many of you have some type of GPS device? Most of you do. In fact, I'll tell you what, yesterday I was putting a little reminder in the computer for me um, to return the library books that I just checked out. Yesterday I got hit with a $25 library fine. That hurt, dude. Like normally my fines are like a couple bucks because it's like 25 cents a day. But like months ago, we checked out all these books, right? It's like three kids and Lily's reading the little picture books and Maggie's now in second grade. So we just come on like stacks of books and we were late returning them. So I got home, I paid the fine, brought home the new library books, and I was putting a reminder in the computer to, to uh, return the library books, and I noticed that it said, do you want to be reminded at a certain time or at a certain location? Dude, do you guys find that amazing? I find that amazing that you can tell your phone to remind you somewhere. Remind me when I am here. So obviously the phone is using some sort of GPS but what's the P in GPS? Position, it's position, which is simply where you are. Okay, so distance does not care about direction. It's just like, boom, how far did you go? Displacement is defined as change in position. So where was our starting point? Palos Verdes, this was the starting point right there. Where was the, where was the ending point? Riverside. Somewhere out in Riverside. So the displacement is this right here. It's the shortest line, which is a straight line. It's the shortest distance between the starting point and the ending point. Can we include a direction there? Yeah, so here, north, south, west, east. Which way was that displacement? East. So however many miles that is, east. The shortest distance from starting point to ending point. Does displacement care about the rest of this journey up there? Nope. So another way to think of distance and displacement, you know, you leave your house, you go for a run. Let's say you run five miles. Are you going to care about the distance you ran or the displacement? The distance. Because your displacement would be zero. If you leave your house and come back to your house, your displacement zero because you're starting and stopping at the same point. Does that make sense? All right, so just to make sure everybody's got this super duper duper clear, one more screen and then we're done. There's a reminder. Okay, so again, displacement and distance. So displacement is change in position, delta x, change of position, and it's equal to final minus initial. If you don't know this, you have to know this. Uh, what is change? It's always final minus initial whatever whatever you're talking about change in position change in money change in temperature change is always final minus initial all right so let's just do some displacements here now so we have this car uh, starting at point a so what, what's the position of the car at point a at 30 meters so x equals 30 meters that's the position at point a What's the position at point B? 50 meters. What's the position over here at point F? At point F, it is negative 50. Okay, um, notice that we have pluses and minuses here. So here, the plus means uh, to the right of zero, to the right of zero, and over here, the negative means to the, to the left of zero. So let's look at A to B. Uh, what would the displacement be from A to B? So we're, go we're going final minus initial. So what's the final A to B? 50 minus 30. That's final minus initial. And that comes out as positive 20. Now remember, vec anything vector always has magnitude and direction. So what's the, what's the magnitude here? The 20. The 20 is the magnitude. And then what's the plus? 
That's the direction. The plus is the direction. So like on our little thing here, like on the little diagram, moving that way is considered what? Plus moving the other way is minus, right? That's our frame of reference here. Does that make sense? Okay, so by the way, from A to B, so we're still talking A to B, circle that. What's the distance from A to B? 20, you would just say 20 meters. Okay, last one and then we're done. Let's now do A to F. So, so A is the starting point, F is the ending point. Okay, so what is the displacement from A to F? It's going to be negative 80. So you're going to you go like this. You go 30. So it's, you know, you know, sorry, you go final, which is negative 50, right? Where does the car end up? F is what? Negative 50 minus the initial. What was the initial? Positive 30. All right, final minus initial. So this comes out as negative 80, oops, negative 80 meters. Okay, so again, what is the negative telling us? The direction. The negative means to the left. The 80 was the displacement. Okay, now, what was the distance A to F? No, not 80. Oh wait, yes 80. No, no 80. It's not 80, because you gotta remember, so the car went like this, it went A out to B, and then back to negative 50. So that's gonna be 30 out to 50, which is what? 30 out to 50 is 20, and then 50, so yeah, it's going to come out as 120 meters. Does that make sense? So the displacement was 80. The distance was 120. That's kind of like one of the tricky, there's not a ton of tricky stuff in physics. Distance and displacement is a tricky one because one is vector, the other one's scalar. All displacement cares about is starting point and ending point. Okay, any questions? All right.